a heat engine cycle. The PV diagram in the figure shows a cycle of a heat engine that uses 0.25 moles of an ideal gas with gamma is equal to 1.40. Process A to B is adiabatic. Part A, find the pressure of the gas at point A. Part B, how much heat enters this gas per cycle and where does it happen? Part C, how much heat leaves this gas in a cycle and where does it occur? Part D, how much work does this engine do in a cycle? And part E, what is the thermal efficiency of the engine? So let's start with part A. We would like to know the pressure at point A. And we're given that the process from A to B is an adiabatic process. Therefore, we have the following relationship between points A and B. Pressure at point A, volume at point A to gamma is equal to pressure at point B, volume at point B to gamma. So we can use this relationship, pressure at point A, volume at point A to gamma is equal to pressure at point B, volume at point B to gamma. So from this, we find pressure at point A to be pressure at point B times VB over VA to gamma. So this is basically uh, what we would obtain uh, symbolically. And if we plug in the numbers, uh, pressure at point A, what was the pressure at point B? It is 1.5 atmospheres. So it is 1.5. What is the volume at point B? The volume at point B is uh, 0.009 meter cube and volume at point A is 0.002 meter cube so it's VB over VA so we have 0 0.009 divided by 0 0.002 to the power 1.4 and therefore this gives us for pressure at point A pressure at point A is 12.3 atmospheres because the original pressure was given in atmospheric units, this is also going to be in atmospheres, 12.3 atmospheres. So let's look at part B. Part B was asking about the heat entering this gas per cycle and where does it happen? Well, first of all, since A to B is an adiabatic process, I know for sure that no heat enters or leaves the gas. However, B to C is an isobaric process. Isobaric process. And if I look at the temperatures, uh, so if I consider the um, isotherms that are going through these points, <laughs> I will see that P to V equals to a constant has the lowest value at point C. So this would be our lowest temperature and it would have the highest value at point A. So this isotherm uh, would be uh, going through point A. And remember adiabatic adiabats are always steeper than isotherms because it's a constant divided by V to gamma where gamma is greater than 1. And if you consider point B, on the other hand, the isotherm that goes through point B is at an intermediate temperature. So this is uh, the temperature uh, TB, which is less than TA. Okay, so uh, having recognized the relationship between these temperatures, I can see that the process from B to C is a cool down. So it's an isobaric uh, cooling down, isobaric cool down process. So, <clears throat> on the other hand, 
the process from C to A is a heat up. So C to A process is an isovolumetric process where the temperature is increasing. So it's heating up. And therefore, when I ask where does the uh, heat enter this gas, the heat enters this gas between points C and A, the isovolumetric uh, process between points C and A is where the heat enters this gas. And I have found this relationship, temperature at A is greater than temperature at B, greater than temperature at C, having drawn the isotherms. Obviously, these are going to be, uh, this hasn't, this shouldn't be steeper than the other two. So if you want to draw this carefully, so this should be uh, in the same manner with A and B isotherms. Okay. And uh, similarly for this one. Now, uh, so how much heat enters this gas per cycle? Therefore, I need to concentrate on the heat added between ports, uh, points C and A. It is N cv delta t because it's an isovolumetric process now i remember that if i have a monatomic gas uh, the only degrees of freedom is translational degrees of freedom of the center of mass cv is 3 over 2 r cp is 5 over 2 r and gamma is 5 over 3 which is 1.67. So obviously, this gas has a gamma 1.4. It's not monatomic. Diatomic gas has a CV of 5 over 2R, rotations plus translations. CP is 7 over 2R. Gamma is 7 over 5, which is 1.4. So I conclude that this is a diatomic gas. Therefore, when I try to calculate the heat entering the gas per cycle between C and A, it should be because C to A is an uh, isovolumetric process and the CV value for a diatomic gas is 5 over 2 R. It should be 5 over 2 NR temperature at A minus temperature at C. So this is how we calculate it. <coughs> and uh, now I have to uh, find out the temperatures at A and C. So uh, pressure at point A, volume at point A is equal to NR temperature at point A. So for temperature at point A, I can use uh, pressure at point A, volume at point A divided by N times R, universal gas constant. And similarly, temperature at point C is PCVC divided by N times R. So if you try to calculate the heat added between points C and A, it will be 5 over 2 and R. Uh, it was TA minus TC. TA is PAVA, PAVA divided by NR minus PCVC divided by NR. And NRs will cancel. And because volumes are equal, VA is equal to VC. So this gives me the heat added between C and A to be 5 over 2 PAVA minus PCVC. But then this was an isovolumetric process. VA and VC are the same. It's 0.002 meter cube. So therefore, the heat added between C and A is 5 over 2 VA PA minus PC. So this would be uh, 
the symbolic answer. Now we're going to plug in the numbers. Uh, the heat added between C and A is 5 over 2. For VA, I substitute 0 0.002 meter cube. Pressure at point A, 12.3. Pressure at point C, 1.5. Times 1.013, 10 to 5 to convert it into Pascals, the SI unit. So I obtain the heat added between point C and A to be 5,470 joules. <coughs> okay, let's move on to part C. Part C is asking how much heat leaves this gas in a cycle and where does it occur? Well, as we have noted here, the process from B to C is a cool down, so that's where the heat leaves the gas. So it would occur between points B and C, which is an isobaric cooldown. Isobaric cooldown. And how much is this heat that leaves this gas? That we have to calculate heat added between points B and C is N Cp delta T. Once again, this is an diatomic ideal gas, so it's 7 over 2 Nr. Tc minus Tb is the heat added. That is 7 over 2 Nr. PCVC over Nr. That's temperature at point C. Minus PBVB over NR, temperature at point B. And we know that the pressures are the same because it's an isobaric process. So therefore, we obtain heat added between points B and C to be 7 over 2, because NRs will cancel. Seven over two PC VC minus VB. Um, so this is where we should substitute numbers. Okay, so heat added between B and C, QBC, should turn out to be negative by the way. It is seven over two. Pressure at point C was. 1.5 atmospheres, 1.5 times 1.013, 10 to 5 pascals. A volume at point C is 0.002. Volume at point A is 0.009. So the heat added between points B and C turns out to be minus 3720 joules. Therefore, in absolute value, the heat added between B and C is 3720 joules leaves the gas because Q B to C is negative. <clears throat> okay, let's go to part D. Part D of the problem says how much work does this engine do in a cycle? Well, I have calculated all the heats and I know that the internal energy change of a cycle is zero because internal energy is a state variable. Therefore, the work done on the gas plus the heat added to the gas should be zero, which is work plus 5470 minus 3720. This gives us for the work done on the gas minus 1,750 joules, or work done by the gas is 1,750 joules. Since it's a heat engine, work should be done by the gas. By the way, if I follow my right hand rule here, uh, curling my fingers in the direction of the process, the thumb points into the board which says that work done on the gas is negative, work is being done by the gas, and therefore it's a heat engine. 
And in part E, we are supposed to calculate the thermal efficiency. It is work done by the engine divided by the amount of heat that enters the cycle. It is 1750 divided by 5470. So this gives us for the efficiency of this cycle, thermal efficiency 0 0.320. Okay, so let's summarize. We have a cycle that consists of an adiabatic, isobaric and isovolumetric process. The gamma is given 1.4. From that information, we infer that this is a diatomic gas. Cv is 5 over 2R, Cp is 7 over 2R. We want to know the pressure of the gas at point A because this is an adiabatic process. Pressure at point A, volume at point A to gamma is pressure at point B, volume at point B to gamma. And if we substitute the numbers, we obtain 12.3 atmospheres. How much heat enters this cycle and where? Here I draw isotherms. I can see that the highest temperature is achieved at point A, lowest temperature at point C. B is at an intermediate temperature and uh, the adiabatic drop has to be steeper than the isothermal one. And uh, therefore I conclude that the process from C to A is where the temperature is increasing so it's heating up and uh, therefore the heat added and Cv delta T between point C and A will give me the answer. However, I don't know the temperatures at point A and C. Therefore, I substitute Pv over Nr since it's an ideal gas at these two points. And I'm careful about using the right thing here. This is an isovolumetric process. Cv is 5 over 2R for a diatomic gas. So... Uh, if I plug in the numbers, noting that Va is equal to Vc, I obtain 5470 joules. In part C, I want to know where does the heat leave the gas and how much. And uh, B to C is an isobaric cool down process. The temperature is decreasing. That's where the heat is leaving the gas. And here I have to use Cp because it's isobaric, which is 7 over 2R for a diatomic ideal gas. And noting that the pressures are the same, 7 over 2 PCVC minus VB, then we substitute the numbers to obtain 3720 joules leaves the gas. The heat added to the gas should be negative in this case. The internal energy for change for a cycle is zero because internal energy is a state variable. Work done on the gas plus heat added to the gas, so if, let's clarify it here, should be equal to zero. So work done on the gas is minus 17, uh, 1750 joules. The heat added to the gas is 5470 minus the heat subtracted, 3720, that's the net, net heat added. So work done, work is being done by the gas, which is 1750 joules, that's why it's a heat engine. We can calculate the efficiency as the useful output of the engine, which is the work done by the engine, divided by the price we pay, that's the heat uh, uh, supplied by the hot reservoir, QH. So this gives us an efficiency of 0 0.32.